and we are off to the races. Pretty good week so far this week. Um, yesterday, um, you know, just kind of wrapping up from Monday to today, um, Monday was kind of a mixed results type of day, depending on how you traded. Um, we went over some of these trades the other day, um, yesterday. This dollar CAD on the break of support it was actually a good trade. Ended up getting, um, you know, we got in when it broke down below this support level and ended up about 35, almost 40 pips into the trade and got stopped out on a bar reversal right in here. So that was a su successful trade. Uh, the other trades that we were looking at, we never got an, a signal on this pound dollar. Pound dollar has been consolidating since uh, class on uh, Monday. This is one to where we had a nice little bearish Gartley set up here on the Aussie dollar, which executed. Uh, that actually got stopped out. Uh, we had, this is where we would have gotten in, right down in here. Here, I'll, I guess I can go ahead and expand this. Um, we would have gotten in right down in here off this swing high. We had some profit in the trade, and then Ozzy ended up coming right back to the upside. Some opportunities do exist today on the Ozzy, though, so let's not forget about that one. It's actually uh, come up to its, um, you know, to where its highs were over in, in March. Uh, at this 78.6 level, you can see that it's formed this little head and shoulders pattern right in through here. And we also have, uh, um, with the Aussie, we also have, you know, oil, gold is down today. Commodities are actually down today, but uh, the rest of the stock markets are up. So that's one we can still keep an eye out on. I wouldn't give up on it just yet. Yesterday was a three for three day, which we don't get very often. Uh, three for three on trades. Uh, euro dollar we had taken a short on the euro dollar yesterday uh, as it broke through its trend line right down in here we had a breakdown through the trend line we put our stop right up above 114 it broke down through 114 ended up making 40 pips on that dollar yen dollar yen we went ahead and took a shot on dollar yen as it rose up above, we were looking for it to break through this resistance level. We got into the trade. Um, you know, it was coming up. We liked the fact that it was building a base right down in here. It's since broken through this little double bottom formation that it formed right down in through here. So the yen is making some some pretty good upward momentum. Uh, so last night was able to get in on a trade. I had moved my stop below this low. I ended up getting stopped out on dollar yen for a 35 pip profit. I was looking for 40, um, almost got there, but got stopped out right down in here when this little tail came down because I had my stop moved below these lows. So all in all yesterday, the one that got away from me because I was already long on dollar yen was right in here. We, were look, uh, we had seen the fact that the CAD was coming down to a long-term support level right down in here and we were looking for the CAD to break down below this 2850 level which it did yesterday this is one to where you could have gotten a higher risk reward ratio it closed beneath 2850 here we were going to put our stop up here um, many of you took this trade congratulations I actually was a little late I hesitated for like five minutes and the CAD right when this bar opened right in here I was looking for a close beneath 2850 which I got but just that's what that's what you get for hesitating. I hesitated for just like five minutes. I was I was watching it, and then it dropped. It dropped like a rock, like 50 points. So I kind of, in the afternoon class yesterday, I had, I had you know, I told people, I said, man, this one kind of really got away from me here because of the fact that I, you know, I, I waited to get in. But that one would have been a, a nice little trade. And then the trade from Monday was also successful on Dollar CAD. So... For the week right now, it's uh, we're four for five, which is not a bad little success rate as far as the class trades go. Looking at the market overall today, here let me take. I'm going to take these fib levels off of here. I'll go ahead and take the trend line and the fib levels off of here. Take the levels off of here. For right now. Not in too big of a hurry um, to, to kind of um, to force something into the market right now. However, 
Um, you know, there are a lot of trade exam, you know, trade opportunities that exist out there today. Let me just kind of run down for you what's going on this morning. Global markets are actually up big uh, right across the board. Uh, you can kind of see here uh, Dow futures, S&P futures, they're all up um, about a half percent. NASDAQ futures are up a little bit more than a half percent. Asian markets did very well overnight. Um, Nikkei was up almost 3%. Hang Seng was up 3%. And the Shanghai stocks were up 1.5%. That's a good sign, actually. And then Europe uh, is crushing it also. Uh, FTSE is up 1.5%. DAX is up 2%. CAC is up 2.5%. So all in all, um, got a lot of upward momentum here from a, from a higher yielding asset standpoint. Uh, getting a little bit of a divergence, too, between commodities and stocks because oil is actually down 1% today. But, it, you know, I think this is more of a, a, a bit of a profit-taking scenario because it's still uh, floating above that $40 a barrel level, which evidently Russia is okay with. Uh, gold is also down 1% today. So that's why we're seeing a little bit of a correction on the commodity currencies. You can kind of see dollar cad is, is kind of, settled and consolidated a bit. Aussie, after having a nice little upward swing, consolidating, forming a reversal pattern, as is New Zealand. So a lot of those commodity currencies are kind of forming some reversal patterns. Yesterday, we weren't done with the euro dollar because the euro dollar actually continued. Uh, the euro dollar finally broke out of this long-term consolidation. Since the end of March, the euro dollar had been consolidating sideways. You can kind of see right in through here, the euro dollar just finally making a breakdown to the downside. Um, it's actually, you know, something that we've been looking at. We haven't been, we traded the euro yesterday, just essentially looking for it to come down to the bottom part of this range, which it did. And, you know, we ended up having a pretty successful trade, just kind of trading it sideways. But now we're getting a you know, after consolidation, 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 we're getting a, a breakdown a little bit here on the euro. Uh, so that's that's actually a pretty positive sign, I think, for, for the dollar, the fact that the euro is finally broken out and it broke out in the direction of dollar strength. Same can be said here on dollar Swiss. Dollar Swiss for dollar Swiss was actually not as consolidated. It was actually making some lower lows in through here. And you can see it it kind of broke out. You can almost see like a double bottom that formed right in through here, like right in here, like almost right near a double bottom formation. It broke out of that reversal pattern, and it's heading up. So, you know, the European currencies have all broken out uh, in the direction of dollar strength. However, if you're seeing this little correction here at the top of the charts and the bottom of the charts of the dollar kind of weakening just a bit, we did have some big news come out this morning on, on the dollar. Uh, we had U.S. retail sales and PPI came out. Um, you may have initially looked at it as being a negative, but but it really wasn't a, a negative, um, a net negative, if you will. Um, it was more mixed than anything. Uh, we had the regular retail sales came out at negative 0.3%. This includes uh, automobiles. They were expecting a rise of 0.1%. The core retail sales number, excluding automobiles, came out at 0.2%. Expectation was 0.4%. The PPI, producer price index, producer price index is not as important as the CPI, the consumer price index, because we are a consumer-based economy. So um, the expectation was a rise of 0.3%. It was negative 0.1%. The reason why we look at these, the uh, reason why the dollar didn't react real negative to these numbers is the fact that they did adjust the previous number. The previous numbers on the retail sales, you can see here, these are the adjustments, were actually negative, and they, um, they actually um, adjusted them up um, to unchanged. So that's why we have more of a mixed result there. And, the, you know, even though those are appear to be negative numbers, we're not really seeing a huge amount of, of you know, it didn't really affect the dollar too much. The dollar got a little bit volatile there. But you're not, you, you didn't see a huge correction of dollar weakness on those numbers because, as you can see, the market took them as, as more mixed than anything. As far as trade opportunities go, um, it's plenty out there. Um, you can almost look at, uh, you know, the, the, the levels today as, you know, being 
there's plenty of opportunities out there really in either direction on the dollar. Um, the Canadian, which has treated us very well this week, we're going to want to stay away from that one, even though I have kind of a, a gut feel that I think the, you know, my gut, my gut is often right and sometimes, and a lot of times it's wrong. So let me, uh, The Bank of Canada BOC interest rate announcement is at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. So right here at the end of class, this will be kind of more of a short class. I'm going to go um, aim for going to about 9:30, 9:35 because uh, I have a meeting that I have to jump into. So um, won't be around for this one, but there's no. I think that the the probability is. Pelos will leave interest rates unchanged. I think there's, I think he's done lowering interest rates. When you think about what drives the Canadian economy, Canadian economy really is driven, you know, off their main, you know, off of um, exports and specifically oil prices is something that uh, obviously the Canadian dollar uh, correlates very well to. And you're not really seeing a, you know, oil prices have been going up which has actually led to, you know, more strength than the Canadian dollar. I don't really, uh, he's going to leave, he's going to leave interest rates unchanged. And with the increase in oil prices, now that they're over $40 a barrel and they've, and they've, you know, and the volatility in underlying oil has really subsided uh, since last year. Um, I think you can expect him to be more neutral to hawkish on his economic out, outlook. He may mention Canadian dollar strength. I don't, I, it's hard to believe that they would have a problem with where the Canadian dollar is trading in relation to the US dollar. It's actually trading at a pretty good level. Um, so I, I don't think that they're going to mention any type of, they'll mention the currency, but they, I don't think they'll really mention that much uh, when it comes to you know, risks involving their underlying currency exchange rate. You know, some of those commodity currencies, the central bankers tend to, to complain quite a bit about their exchange rates. It seems like, you know, a lot of the commodity currencies, New Zealand, Australia, Canada, you know, it seems like they're never happy with where their exchange rate is at. Um, you know, the, the, it seems like the lower their exchange rate goes or the weaker their currency gets versus the dollar, it actually it tends to stimulate their exports a little bit more. So, I, but I, I kind of expect more of some hawkish sentiment from Pelos this morning. In fact, you know, the, there for a while they were more dovish and looking to possibly lower their interest rates um, even further. But I think that he's, he'll probably signal to the market that for right now he's done with any type of talk of lowering interest rates. Just my gut is I think, you know, Canadian could potentially increase at 10 a.m., but you know those gut that gut feel is not enough for me to want to trade the Canadian today. I'm just saying that I know a lot of you do trade Canadian. We've actually had some very good luck on the Canadian as of um, as of late. If I had to kind of pick a direction, I would think that you know the interest rate announcement would favor the Canadian dollar. So we'll kind of um, you know we'll put an X over dollar CAD for right now. Nothing wrong with staying away from dollar CAD right now. I mean when I'm you know. It's done its job this week. It's done very well for us, so we can kind of give it a break, at least until tomorrow or overnight. So let's get into the opportunities here for the day, and there's plenty of them. I mean, pick you can almost pick any currency on this on this uh, uh, that we're looking at as far as the dollar goes, and you know there's and there's I think what would uh, be high probability setups really in either direction. But I'm going to start here with our good friend, the pound. We had given the pound a rest yesterday. Um, we kind of let it, you know, just kind of go its own way, if you will. Uh, it had come up kind of to a 78.6% retracement. You can see it's almost like uh, the commodity currency. It's making a little bit of a reversal pattern. It did have kind of a head and shoulders top right in through here. But the neckline, 
you know, there's no real neckline to speak of. The real, the real support level here on the pound is pretty obvious. You can see how much support was found here at this 4,200 level. The thing you want to be careful about on the pound is tomorrow um, the Bank of England, uh, their Monetary Policy Committee has their interest rate announcement coming up tomorrow. You probably want to, you know, I don't, I don't think there's an issue with trading, you know, the pound right now, you know, and, and, and for the next, you know, 24 hours or whatever it might be. But tomorrow morning at 7 a.m., or 22 hours, I should say, they do have their interest rate announcement. With some more of the hawkish tone coming out of Mark Carney, who's the head of the Bank of England, um, you'd want to keep an eye on these votes. It's expected to be 009. In case you don't know what these votes mean, is that this first number is a vote for, to, to raise interest rates, the second number is the vote to lower interest rates, and this third number are the number of voters and how many people vote to keep rates unchanged. So it's 009 with all nine Monetary Policy Committee members uh, actually voting to keep rates unchanged. Now, um, Mark Carney has actually been a little bit more hawkish as of late with uh, some of his statements surrounding the, the you know, the, the great Brit uh, the British economy. It wouldn't surprise me if when they do come out with their official interest rate announcement, which is expected to be unchanged, they're not going to raise interest rates. I'm not saying that. But whenever whenever the Bank of England wants to strike a more hawkish tone in the market, uh, what they tend to do is you'll tend to have like one voter come to the side of raising interest rates, knowing full well that they're not going to raise interest rates, just to kind of signal to the market that the what their tone is. Like 009, if you looked at it as a statement, uh, like an interest rate statement, 009 would be considered a, a, a neutral statement. So, you know, really just same old, same old, nothing. You wouldn't really expect any type of volatility on the pound. 109, 108 would be like a hawkish statement. It would be saying, you know what, um, you know, just to show the market that we are a little bit more upbeat and more hawkish on the economy, you know, we've allowed, we have one voter went to the side of raising interest rates. Uh, and that, that in no way, shape, or form signals that they're going to raise rates anytime soon. It's basically just their nod to the market that we are a little bit more upbeat, more hawkish in the economy. And then throughout the year, you might see more voters go to, this, uh, go to the side of raising rates until 2017, where you'd see probably a majority come in uh, to raise rates, which is what their expectation is. So the point being that uh, with the pound tomorrow, I am looking for shorts on the pound right now, but you would certainly want to close out any short positions because if you do have one voter go to the other side of the table and indicate more of an upbeat tone in the British economy, uh, you would certainly want to be out of any short positions on the pound because that's where the risk would be on the pound is upside risk uh, should there be a little bit of a surprise on the voting uh, for their interest rate announcement. With that being said, nothing wrong with trading the pound today because there's really no significant news coming out today on the pound. They did have their CPI come out the other day above expectations, but you can see how much this 4200 level has held. So what I would look for today, a sell entry, I'm going to stick with a little bit more conservative of a tone, a close below 4200. And it's already negative five on the totals and a negative five on the one hour totals. In fact, I want to pull it up. I pulled it up on the wrong screen. I want to pull it up here on the pit view chart because you can actually see the, the bit of a, uh, you can see the liquidity providers turning on this also. You can kind of see how it's been making lower lows right in through here, even though it's been consolidated, it's making no lower lows here on the liquidity provider trend line. and already negative five. So uh, market makers, liquidity providers are certainly favoring the sell side of the equation a little bit more. But we don't really trust that until it actually breaks out into some kind of level. So sell entry, let's write this out again. Close below, look for a close. Uh, you know, if it starts, you know, you know, another way you can look at it, if it's negative five when it breaks down below 4,200, you could be more aggressive, you know, especially if it starts to really, really move. 
Um, let's say if it goes to like the 4190 level or starts to breach these lows over here. Steven, I just got your uh, your message there. Um, can you, uh, what does the error say on PitView? Or actually, uh, shoot me an email with the error message and I'll forward it to the, the tech support people. And I can try to I can try to get that done for you as far as get a, a fix on that a quick fix. Something you can try, Stephen, is on the chart that you have pit view on. If you have it loaded on the charts, if it's not connecting, you can press PF3. And if there's an error message when you press PF3 on your computer, you can delete that. And sometimes that'll bring it back up. Otherwise, I'll I'll have to uh, send that to support. The stop, uh, you know, here's where our swings, swing highs are. You know, you can go one pip above the swing high. So, so we're looking for a psychological level to be broken. You can go 50 max on your stop. You know, I don't think there's any need to go over 50 pips on a stop order. If the pound does break down, let's just look for a limit of one-to-one -one risk reward on that you can look for high if you want to look for higher risk reward ratio you can I think if it breaches this low it puts the 40 you can see right down in here the 4100 level is where the support is right down in here that puts that back into play I mean so you do have plenty of room to go for a, a larger risk reward ratio like a one to one and a half so and especially if you have a larger account size and you could do more than one lot, uh, the ideal thing to do on the pound would be do a limit one, limit two scenario if your account can handle uh, 50 pips of risk and, you know, handle doing more than one lot. Uh, look for a limit one of one to one risk reward and move your stop to break even and you can look for um, a bigger limit of one to one and a half. But if you can only do one lot, I would suggest just looking for the one to one risk reward for that particular scenario. But you definitely want to wait for that pound to get out of that little consolidation zone. Euro dollar is starting to, to make some retracements here. Uh, you know, you can see it, it, it had broken down a little bit below this 113 level right down in here. I don't think it actually made a close below 113. It's already kind of extended itself down here to the downside. I mean, since yesterday, um, let's see here. Since yesterday, it's moved about 80 pips. So, I mean, I guess, uh, oh, ow. <laughs> Sorry. I don't know why, but I bit my tongue right then. <laughs> you, know, you can see how it started to turn. It's starting to, you know, come up here a little bit on the LP trend line. So, there's some buyers coming in on the euro dollar at these levels. <laughs> that kind of hurt. I don't know how that happened. I think the bound, the pound is the better short play here. You know, letting the, the euro dollar kind of rest a bit is probably a good idea. Um, you know, since we already did make some money to the downside. But, you know, just like on the pound, you know, the, the key level you'd want to look at here on the, on the euro, right here at 113. Now that the euro is kind of reverse course and come out of that consolidation zone, it has a lot of room to move. I mean, it has a lot of room to move down uh, when you look at where it could go uh, going back into late March, um, you know, down here near these 112, 
um, 111 levels right down in here. You know, and here's, you know, here's where the consolidation's been since the end of March, right up in here. So, you know, euro dollar does have, you know, quite a bit of room to move. It would be a it would be a little bit more of a risky play because of the fact that um, you know if you want to put this on the sidelines there's nothing wrong with that but if we can get another break or a close beneath 113 it 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 broke 113 but it never closed below it like the close right here is 113.018 so it did it tried to make a break below that 113 level but it it really just it couldn't hang on there. So if you are looking for any type of opportunity here, I'll go ahead and write this out because it is, it's an actual, it's an, it's an awfully tempting offer there on a close below 113. And on the, when it comes to the totals, I would want the liquidity providers to be on your side on that. I would look for that negative five to come about, which it was. It was down to a negative five here, and since it's been coming back up, so I would look for a total reversal from the liquidity providers. But you might be able to get enough to where you can put your stop above a swing high. And potentially, you can look for and this is just like the pound. You can look for a higher risk reward ratio. I'm going to put one to one on here, but it certainly has some room to go. You could almost go. What would be the risk right in there? I mean, you're you're only looking at like 30 30 pips based on the current swing high. You know, you could look for a one to one and a half there. You know, look for a larger amount. The pound, you know, based on putting our stop, you know, at a decent level is, is you know, obviously going to give us a little bit more of a stop order. But if you do get, if you do get a signal for an overall breakdown on the euro dollar, you know, that's not a, that's not a bad scenario there. It's one that I would trust because it has broken down. I kept on saying 112, I think. Uh, I meant 113. And today is April 13th, so the horoscope lines up also. I'm just kidding. <laughs> and one more dollar strength scenario. And that's going to be on our on our friend the Aussie dollar. I don't want to totally give up on Aussie, just because of the formation that it's making right now. So I don't want to go total. You can see it's made a head and shoulders top here, and you can see almost the L. This doesn't happen often with the LP trend line, but you know the LP trend line is kind of making the same formation. You know, shoulder head, almost close to being a right shoulder over there but it's consolidated sideways it's not exactly making higher highs it's actually consolidated sideways and then you have this nice little head and shoulders pattern that is formed right in through here nice little reversal pattern that is formed right at the 78.6 percent retracement level also so you got a couple of things working for you in this case you know 78.6 percent retracement head and shoulders pattern and if you if you buy into just basic um, basic uh, chart pattern theory, if you will. Uh, you also have, you know, in the troughs on either side of the peak, you also have an ascending neckline. And whenever you, whenever you see an ascending neckline on a head and shoulders top, that is generally a signal of a higher probability setup. And you can see it never, it, it, it tried to come down below on this neckline. It, it tried to break down, but it never really did. If you, uh, you know, it's been kind of oscillating right in through here. 
I wouldn't draw this as a low. I would draw this as just some support here. But if you can get a close below this neckline, I mean, connect the two troughs on either side of the, the peak right there in the middle. And if you can get a close beneath that neckline, and a negative five on the one hour totals. I would call this a horse poking its nose through the fence line here. Uh, if you can get a strong close below the neckline, if you get a strong candle or just a barely, you know, a close beneath there, um, I think this would have some room to go. I like the, the setup of that, that little reversal strategy. I like the fact that the LP trend line is consolidating at those levels. If it does break down to negative five, you're going to see this turn red. You're going to start to see it come down and start making lower lows, much like it did right in through here. And I also like the fact that it's retracing to a 78.6 level. The stop you'd want to put right up above this right shoulder. So the stop would be 0.76. Eight one zero. If you wanted to, you can kind of call this a swing bounce right in through here. If you wanted to put your stop a little bit lower, you could, I mean, this is a swing high right up in here, but we're only talking about a matter of six or seven pips. This is another one to where I think if it breaks down through here that we have some room to go to the downside. So, this is another one that I would certainly look for if you can do one lot of looking for a one to one and a half risk reward. Commodities are down today, so you and the Aussie does not correlate as much as it used to to gold. There's still a small, there is still a, a better than 50% correlation. Don't get me wrong between the Aussie and gold. Um, it used to, back in the day, it used to correlate like 90% to gold prices, but that's just not the, on, an, on a daily basis. That's really not the case anymore, but falling gold prices, which we have today, uh, should help bring, would help bring this down. A lot of these scenarios and a lot of these formations, most of them do favor dollar strength. And you shouldn't feel too bad about selling into or, or buying into that dollar strength because of the fact that, um, hold on one second, have your shoulders. Because when you have something like the Euro, which is the most actively traded pair, well over like 20% of Forex volume, it's almost like 27%, I think, goes through the Euro dollar pair. And you see that thing breaking down the way it has out of that consolidation that we've had for literally two weeks. It's been consolidated sideways. Um, you know, it looks like dollar strength could be back in play. And, you know, whenever those situations happen, you want to be able to jump in on them. So to answer the question, yes, you'd kind of want to just ignore this, uh, th these tails right in through here. I mean, if you wanted to wait for it to break down through that low, you could, but I think it would be good enough, if, especially if you get the negative five, if you get a close below that neckline, you can see how much selling pressure there already is right in that area. So, you know, this one does give you an opportunity um, today, I believe. That's my story anyway. Yen, one of our other successful trade scenarios from yesterday. I think if, if we're going to look for dollar weak scenarios, uh, we probably want to look on the yen. Now, this might freak you out a little bit. You can actually trade the yen in either direction, uh, IMHO, in my, in my opinion. Um, several things on the yen. So let me just kind of slow down a little bit here on the yen is... For one thing, we did have this long-term double bottom that formed right in through here, which shows that there was a huge amount of support here. That's one of the reasons why we went long the yen, the dollar yen yesterday, is because you know that that's that's a pretty that's almost 
if you opened up a textbook and turned to double bottom formation, there's a picture of this double bottom right in through here. Um, picture of it on the here's a picture of it on the four hour chart. You know, so that is a textbook double bottom, and that it most and that it recently broke up above. The yen, you know, these are just some scenarios that I could put on there just for, you know, just in case we do get a sell-off on the dollar today. Here, let me change this back to a to a one-hour time frame. You can see how much resistance there was right here at this 109 level, and that's where, yeah, and that's where the new support level. You can see that 109 level, it actually coincides almost to that, to the highs over here on the on the double bottom whoops you can see that coincides at that 109 level at that double bottom price right there but let me put this back at the 109 level if you did want to keep things simple today you could just look at dollar yen and trading it in either direction instead of looking at any of these other currency pairs you could look to trade the dollar yen really in either direction let me see did that there we go right in through there you can see that we have a trend line one two three four five six you know six bounces off that trend line and where does that trend line coincide with? It coincides with that 109 level. Right now it's you know, a little bit below it. So it's starting to make a little bit of a swing low. If it does break down below, if this, if this turns out to be a false break on that double bottom formation, you could actually look to sell I would wait for it to close, not just close below the 109 level, which would be, you know, you would want to look for it to close below the 109 level and the trend line. You don't want to get caught up in a bounce off that trend line on the dollar yen. It could break down below 109, but it could be a false break to the downside and just make a, a break off the and make a bounce off that trend line since it's been established and it is a validated trend line and then you'd also want negative five on the one hour totals on the pit view indicator notice how I'm using closes here though I'm I'm not uh, sometimes we'll be more aggressive and say look for a break but I would I would look, certainly look for a close on these levels On the flip side of that equation, since it has broken through a double bottom formation, you can probably doesn't take a ton of bricks to fall on your head to know where I'm going with this one. If that does prove to be support, And certainly we've already taken some profits off on this on the dollar yen could have reached max profit but I moved my stop below these lows overnight and ended up getting stopped out on this little tail but I it, it's not a big deal because I got stopped out with like a 35 pip profit so whenever people hear stopped out they sometimes <laughs> they'll sometimes be like whoa what do you mean stopped out um, 
stopped out in a good way, stopped out at a profit level. So whenever you can preserve profits, it's always a good thing. There we go. And the stop, this low right down in here, And with whatever that swing low happens to be, that would still put you like right at the 109 level. If you wanted to, you could put it like 10899. If you wanted to put it just below the 109 level, but you can see that's where it's, you know, that's where the resistance was, and that's where it's kind of having some support here. And if we do get a large risk on type of day. I would just, on this yen to the upside, since it's a momentum trade, since we'd be asking it to kind of overextend itself a bit in the next 24 hours or however long your swing trades last, I would just look for a one-to-one -one risk reward on the yen. You know, the, the yen is a nice one to where I think you could, you, you have some potential in either direction. And you can see, the LP trend line is, is doing the same thing. It's kind of just going sideways here. So, I mean, that's that pretty much tells you, yeah, you know, we can we can look for, for trades in either direction there. So we'll put that one under dollar strength. Quite frankly, you could also call this a risk on trade. Now I'm running out of time here because I got to jump into a, a, a quick meeting before I do my uh, 1030 shindig here. Um, so I need to kind of speed things up here. Let me just kind of go around the the horn here. Let's see what all these are doing. You can see Aussie dollars starting to make a little bit of a sell-off there. So that's close. It's negative, what, 0.4. Let's see here. What's the pound dollar? We were looking for a break. That's starting to break down a bit, so that's one to keep an eye on. Euro dollar probably is, that may be bouncing up. Let's see. Euro dollar, same thing, starting to make a breakdown lower. So that one's certainly breaking down. You can kind of look at, if you want to look at pound and euro, uh, you can almost look for, you know, whichever one happens first. But I would look for, I, I would need these totals to reverse course on this euro. It's already kind of extended itself a little bit to the downside. But wait until the end of the hour. Somebody wanted me to take a look at Euro Yen. I'm assuming that's breaking down because Yen's coming down. Oh, that was Phil. Looking like right in through here. I mean, there's several different trend lines that are being broken here. Here's kind of a longer term trend line that's being broken. Here's a shorter term trend line. Right in here that's being broken. Obviously things point to the downside on, on your, I mean, it's not a bad scenario. I mean, we're, if we're looking for shorts on Euro and short, you know, this is a day when, if we're looking for shorts on Euro and shorts on the dollar yen, then there would be absolutely nothing wrong with looking for shorts on euro yen because when you short euro yen you're shorting the euro dollar and you're shorting the dollar yen one thing that i would kind of bring into the equation here this is not a bad trade setup by the way um you know it's it, it it's obviously breaking down it's making some technical breaks here through new lows but one thing that you might want to consider if you will since this is a cross pair is 
before I, you know, an easy way to do this would be to confirm that the euro dollar is breaking down below 113. That would be one piece of confirmation. And then I would also, a second piece of confirmation, at least be looking for the, the dollar yen to be breaking down below 109. That would give you the best bang for your buck. If not, if the dollar yen's not breaking down, all that would do is cause an anchor, that would anchor that trade a little bit into going sideways if the dollar yen were to, if dollar strength comes into play and the dollar yen does start to go up and the euro dollar continues going down, that could create a sideways action on euro yen. So one added piece of confirmation, this is not, I won't put this on the trading sheet, but this is a nice little setup here is, you know, euro dollar yes is kind of breaking down below a key level. My, the key here would be, if euro dollar is breaking down below a key level and the dollar yen has not yet broken down below a key level, why not just short the euro? I mean, it, that would take away that, you know, that, that yen part of the equation. Whenever you're looking at cross pairs, you are looking at, at two pairs. If you don't believe me, take the exchange rate on the euro dollar, multiply it by the exchange rate on dollar yen, and it will equal out to what the exchange rate or within like a pip based on the spread and what the euro yen is trading at. Um, <laughs> it's a kind of like a little 4x magic trick. So that's what I would do. I, it's not a bad trade scenario, but I would I would actually look for, you know, if I wanted to short, you know, if, if I get a signal to short dollar yen and I got a signal to short euro dollar, why not just short the euro yen? That's actually a good trade. If I don't get a short, if, if the signal, if, if that dollar yen is not breaking down below that 109 level, it's not breaking down below that trend line, then take the yen part of the out of the equation and just short the euro dollar, um, and that 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 would alleviate the risk uh, of um, of the yen going up. Essentially, if you get the yen go up and the euro dollar is going down, that could create. See, that's what it, see this consolidation right in through here. See how this went sideways on the euro yen. What happened overnight? Here, let me pull down. What happened overnight on euro dollar and dollar yen? Here's euro yen breaking down. Euro dollar starting to break down. You see how dollar yen went up and the euro dollar went down? Euro dollar went down, dollar yen went up overnight. What did euro yen do? You see how it went sideways? <laughs> you know, it went sideways overnight. Why? Because you had downward pressure on the euro going down, you had upward pressure on the dollar yen going up, and that caused sideways action. So for me, I think the better play there would be looking, you know, just to short the euro dollar. I mean, that would be the easier play instead of, um, instead, you know, right now we're getting, the reason why you're getting such a big move down here on euro yen is because euro dollar is going down and dollar yen is also going down. However, if dollar yen start, if dollar strength comes into play, remember we're right in the midst of the U.S. session right now. If dollar strength comes into play and the dollar yen starts to go up and euro dollar continues down, you'll see this start to happen on the on the euro yen pair. So once again, not a bad setup, but if it were me, not only would I be waiting for that euro dollar to be giving me the signal to go short but I'd be looking for dollar yen to be giving me that short signal also in breaking down. Otherwise, you're going to get into a watching paint dry scenario on your trade to where it's going to go sideways. And I hope that makes sense, but I mean, that's, that's what a cross pair is. So anywho, um, I've gone one way too long. I, I got to jump into this meeting because I got another 1030 class coming up. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and jump off here. I'm going to save the trading sheet. Got a meeting to prepare, prepare for here. I think all of these are pretty good trade scenarios for today. At the very least, if you get uh, multiple entries, um, I think it gives you the opportunity to, you know, 
And we may not go three for three like we did yesterday, but it does give you the opportunity to at least, uh, you know, if you get multiple trade entries to, to break even, perhaps, you know, go one for one, which would be a word, kind of a, an average case scenario. And let me share the handout with you. There's your handout. 